hello and welcome dear friends let's move on to yet another important elemental cycle in nature that is the phosphorus cycle this element is a very important component of the life systems on this earth but before venturing into the various transformations or how this uh, unique element recycles in nature i would like to just throw some light on the general structure of the biosphere the atmosphere the earth and how it is interlinked with our life systems maybe this should have been the very first lecture during uh, explaining or while explaining these elemental cycles but better late than never i just want to give you a good idea of how these elements whether it is carbon nitrogen phosphorus or sulfur which we will be seeing in the next uh, lecture how these elements they form a very important chain in not only formation of the general structure of the earth but how these are linked to the biological systems so if you just see here the earth is made up of a core above which it's very hot the core of the earth is believed to be very hot and when there are eruptions these these core elements when they erupt out they come in the form of volcanoes next to it is mantle and above which there are two spheres that is the geosphere and the hydrosphere above the geosphere or the hydrosphere that is the land we call it as the atmosphere so if you take a cross section of this mantle then this is made up of again two layers the crust which is the soil rock layer which is beneath the ground and just above with a very what you can say interface with the atmosphere is the soil and the biosphere where the organisms they live okay so here the soil rocks or the crust this is made up of all the elements from where the recycling takes place it is taken the elements are taken in the form of uh, some soluble elements they become a part of the living system in the form of cells how does that happen it happens like this that is the smallest unit atom this hydrogen oxygen chnops carbon hydrogen oxygen nitrogen phosphorus sulfur all these small units of chemical elements at the very bottom you can see they combine in two or more forms and form a molecule like water h2o two hydrogen and one oxygen simplest chemical formula where two atoms they combine to form a molecule now various such molecules they form a integral part of a cell cell may be a plant cell animal cell microbial cell so on and so forth so these molecules they combine to form a cell now this cell is what all the elements are made up of that is a formation of a cell requires energy it requires metabolism it requires various types of uh, energy and carbon sources along with it nitrogen along with it phosphorus sulfur etc and when these cells they organize to give rise to a organism we can still there can be one more level organelles cell organelles systematic organization of the organelles results into an organism this organism then they have a, what you can say geological distribution they become come together to form a population the population of different species living in a particular place and uh, potentially interacting with each other they form a community communities can be of humans plants animals so on and so forth all these communities community of different species when they interact with one another means humans they interact with plants plants with animals animals with animals animals with humans when they interact with one another and with their living and non living environment they become a ecosystem and ecosystem is a component of the biosphere a part of the earth's air water and soil where life is formed and we from the life it goes on taking these elements from the nature and one day gives back to the nature so what keeps us and other organisms alive i can give two to three concepts regarding this first concept is the four major components of the earth's life support system which is atmosphere the hydrosphere the geosphere 
and the biosphere come again that is atmosphere which is the air hydrosphere which is the water geosphere the rock soil and the sediment and the biosphere of the living things this is what keeps us alive the second concept is life is sustained by the flow of energy from the sun photosynthesis is very important from there only the carbonaceous compounds are formed so life is sustained from by the flow of photons that is the sun's energy through the biosphere and along with it cycling of nutrients within the biosphere and gravity gravity is what keeps us on the surface of the earth and the cycling of nutrients when the cycling of nutrients takes place now that is where the carbon nitrogen phosphorus etc they come into action the third component uh, concept is the component of ecosystem some organisms they produce the nutrients like plants phototrophs others like us heterotrophs they get the nutrients by consuming the producers and some organisms or animals systems we can say they recycle the nutrients like microorganisms and they release this component back to the environment or back to the producers by decomposing the wastes and the remains of this organism we call it as the decomposition or the decaying so these are the these major components of the ecosystem and these interactions keeps going what the life system is all about on this earth and this is what creates a biodiversity of life on the earth so you should now be in a position to understand the importance of these elements whether that is carbohydrate uh, carbon whether that is nitrogen whether that is phosphorus or sulfur so this is basically responsible for the biodiversity on this earth having said this all these elements are not freely available nor we can directly utilize these if available in the free form there has to be some intermediate reactions we saw that with the carbon we saw that with nitrogen and now we will see that with phosphorus now there are three factors which sustain life on earth if you just Uh, take a gist of what i have just said one way flow of high quality energy that is sun plants from sun to plants plants to living things living things to environment as heat and then radiation to space then cycling of nutrients to the part of the biosphere and the gravity which holds everything on the surface of the earth out of this i find cycling of the nutrients through the parts of the biosphere as the most important factor which sustains the life on the earth what are the three reasons why life is there on the earth of course gravity which holds the earth's atmosphere and everything on the face of the earth is also important the photosynthesis is also important that is one way flow of energy but apart from that once all these are in place it is very important that the nutrients are recycled through the parts of the biosphere if they are immobilized or if they are trapped in one particular ecosystem then there will be a huge imbalance humans and our activities are resulting into a imbalance of this cycling of nutrients how that we will see in the end of this lecture now the major biotic and abiotic components of ecosystem with respect to any cycle if you see there is a producer then there is a consumer a primary consumer the secondary consumer which thrives on the primary consumer now there is a producer that is a primary producer the at the core which utilizes the sun's energy which which utilizes carbon dioxide oxygen uh, releases oxygen photosynthesis takes place and carbohydrates are synthesized there so that is a producer on the producer the primary consumer they thrive secondary consumers they consume the primary consumer then the one they did die when these secondary consumers they die primary or secondary when they die they are decomposed by the soil microorganisms then soil organic content increases along with water that is again recycled and produced given to the uh, primary producers so this cycle is the one of the most important part of the food chain and it is a major component of the ecosystem and it involves biotic and as well as a biotic components biotic components the plant producers primary secondary consumers and the decomposers they are the biotic components 
and abiotic components are the elements that is the oxygen carbon dioxide carbon hydrogen nitrogen phosphorus sulfur soil etc these are the abiotic components atmosphere air n number of abiotic components are there so producers and consumers they are the living components of the ecosystem producers they are autotrophs by photosynthesis or chemosynthesis they produce carbonaceous compounds which are consumed by the heterotrophs they are the consumers so primary consumers they are herbivores which eat plant material secondary consumers are there tertiary consumers are there carnivores are there and omnivores are there so these are the living components of the ecosystem producers they are mainly photosynthetic uh, things means which have the capacity to undergo uh, photosynthesis trap the sun's energy and form carbohydrates plants are there algae and uh, most of the blue green algae etc they also come under producers consumers whether these consumers are what you can say herbivorous or carnivorous there is nothing called as uh, vegetarian and non vegetarian these words don't exist in biological sciences you can call it as herbivorous or carnivorous even these carnivorous animals which are there they are primarily dependent upon the plants only because these carnivores which eat the animals they are somewhere thriving on the primary producers so producers and consumers are the living components of the ecosystem decomposers detritivores that is like which feed on the dead bodies of uh, other organisms like earthworms are there vultures are there microorganisms are there decomposers the microorganisms which consume the uh, dead and decay they consume the dead and decaying part like the plant litter is there dead and dead insects are there etc even dead bacteria may be there fungi may be there all these are decomposers there are detritivores which are also feeding on dead bodies of other organisms decomposers the fungi mushrooms vultures etc these are the part of ecosystem and detritivores and decomposers these are like the beetles ants termites dry rot fungus wood fungus fungi as the time progresses you can see there is a decomposition this log of wood as you see as the time progresses ultimately it is broken down to small components and released in the uh, soil so ultimately the recycling of nutrient takes place and when we talk about recycling of nutrient phosphorus sulfur carbon nitrogen all they are very important so how this things means how this decomposition takes place this decomposition takes place via aerobic respiration or anaerobic respiration that is fermentation when decomposition takes place by microorganisms either they uh, carry out this decomposition means go back to the first slide where we talked about the atoms forming molecules molecules forming cells cells forming the uh, organelles and a complete organism when this organism is decomposing the reverse reaction takes place organism is converted in organelles organelles they are separated into molecules molecules they are then converted into atoms and released in the soil so this takes place this reverse reaction of decomposition takes place either by aerobic respiration or anaerobic respiration means in the presence of air or in the absence of air when it is in the presence of air oxygen is needed which turns glucose back to carbon dioxide and water whereas in anaerobic respiration which is also called as fermentation when it is involving microorganisms end products are carbon compounds such as methane or acetic acid so having seen this you should now have a very good idea of how the elemental components they recycle in the nature they form a part of the biosystem biomass i can say and then the biomass grows up to a certain period of time every living cell or every living system has a particular life span on this earth and with respect to this life form life uh, age we can say they grow 
accumulate the components and one day they die. When they die off, this is ultimately added back into the soil. Whatever may be the culture, religion, type, genera, species, plant, insects, humans, animals, everybody they have a lifespan. Once their lifespan is over, they are dead and after dead, the ultimate fate is adding into the soil. And out of these elements, carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, sulfur and n number of elements which forms this biosystem or the biomass. Phosphorus is one of the most important components I can say along with also all are important. One of the vital components which forms an essential part of all living organism. It is needed by the human body to make proteins for growth. It is main, needed for maintenance of cells. It is needed for repair of cell tissues. Phosphorus plays a very important role in the cell development and is a key component of molecules which store energy that is ATP. Okay. It is also a component of DNA, phospholipids, lipids are there, uh, then oils, fats and oils, phosphorus in the human, uh, what you can say, endeavor of evolution of becoming modern. We have used phosphorus to manufacture safety matches. We have used phosphorus to manufacture steel, bronze, phosphor bronze, phosphates are also ingredients of some detergents and phosphorus is used to make uh, LEDs also, lights. Now see, the use of phosphorus is increasing day by day by humans. That has a great impact on phosphorus and phosphorus is totally different from other elements. Why? Because phosphorus does not exist in gaseous form. Just like carbon dioxide, carbon is in gaseous form. Nitrogen, it is already in its, uh, what you can say, N2 is in gaseous form. Phosphorus is not available in gas. It is all available in trapped form of rock phosphate. We will first see now the phosphorus cycle where it is present and how it recycles as an introductory part. Let's come and go through the phosphorus cycle. I will guide you to an interactive mode of this phosphorus cycle and in today's lecture we will just understand how this phosphorus moves through the nature from where it is obtained how it recycles and why it is called as a phosphorus cycle and I will give you a small perspective of the human impact on the uh, impact of humans on the phosphorus and its cycling. Humans they are rapidifying or you can say accelerating the phosphorus cycle which is not good for the environment. I will come to that but let us just see the introduction aspect of phosphorus cycle and uh, we will see how the rain and how the uh, rocks in which the phosphate is trapped it is made available to the plants and how and how the phosphorus it moves from the living system to the non-living system how it is distributed and how it is given back to the nature this will be the part of introductory uh, lecture in this episode my second lecture part 2 of phosphorus cycle will deal with the microbiology of phosphorus cycle. But come let us see this interesting phosphorus cycle and uh, I have just chosen a presentation where it will be somewhat interactive. So let us see the basic elements and the basic steps involved in the phosphorus cycle. The phosphorus cycle starts with the trapped phosphorus which is there present in the rocks in the form of minerals. I would like to emphasize two things here about the uniqueness of this phosphorus cycle that phosphorus first of all is not present as gas. It is not in the gaseous form which makes it more difficult for the biological systems to fix or acquire it. The phosphorus whichever whatever amount is present in the nature is trapped in rocks or in soil in the form of mineral in rock phosphate and this has to be solubilized okay so solubilization of this phosphate is a very important step in the phosphorus cycle i'll come to that but let's start with the significance of phosphorus the dna which is a 
headquarter of all the activities of life is made up of phosphorus dna molecules they are made up of three uh, elements that is sugar nitrogen base and you know very well a phosphate group that is phosphorus now this phosphorus is very important because apart from being a part of the dna it also is a part of the adenosine triphosphate that is three phosphate groups are there which is needed for energy and atp it stands for adenosine triphosphate okay so atp three phosphates are there and it is the energy currency of all cells not a single metabolic reaction is made possible or is carried forward without enzymes and these enzymatic reactions which form the backbone of metabolism most of them very vital reactions they need atp for breakdown where one phosphate is donated to the reaction atp gets converted into adp and again in another enzymatic reaction adp is converted back to atp and it is ready for another energy enhancing reaction so phosphorus is very important when it comes to the metabolic reactions third dna atp for metabolism the third is as you can see the phospholipid bilayer okay phosphorus is a part of the cell wall where a part of the cell is semi permeable allows some of the materials to enter or exit the cell that is it uptakes glucose amino acids etc et we have seen this in active transport active transport and passive transport is there but whether it is active or passive it has to pass the semi permeable membrane that is the lipid bilayer the bilayer of lipid the semi permeable membrane and it contains phosphate the phospholipid bilayer this is the phospholipid bilayer as you can see and it enhances the transport of important nutrients major and minor nutrients inside the cell and it also is responsible for removal of the waste material outside the cell wall so it acts as a boundary it acts as a boundary for the nutrients selecting the nutrients which nutrients have to be taken inside and which metabolites have to be excreted outside so cell membrane is one of the important part of the uh, cell which contains phospholipid bilayer and this phospholipid bilayer is responsible for transport of nutrients so this is the significance of phosphorus and the cell membrane as i just said is made up of a double layer of lipids which are called as phospholipids and this phospho means phosphorus so this phosphorus is very important component of dna atp energy and cell wall where uh, transport is uh, transport is facilitated with respect to the major and minor elements now our cells they need phospholipid dna atp all they have phosphorus inside it so where does this phosphorus come from inside the cells for atp formation or whatever the reactions i just said from where does this phosphorus come from it comes from basically rocks this is a hardcore fact and that is the very important aspect of this or uniqueness of this phosphorus cycle that it doesn't come from air or it doesn't come from atmosphere or it doesn't come from uh, what you can say directly from soluble form from the soil there is lot of phosphorus in the soil but it is not utilizable it is trapped there and it is insoluble form it has to be converted into a soluble form first so phosphorus comes from rocks rocks these are solid lumps of minerals what are rocks they are solid lumps of minerals and some of these minerals are phosph are phosphorus most of these minerals they are phosphorus so when the rocks they are broken down when they crumble okay when they erode eroding and crumbling means larger rocks becoming smaller rocks phosphorus is released from these rocks and the weather it causes these rocks to crumble that is lightning rains weathering is a phenomenon and wind cold this cause these 
or a millennia. This is not one day or two day process. It requires thousands and millions of years to convert this rock into dust. And it rain, it causes uh, it to convert into smaller particles as small as dust may be. And then it releases phosphorus into the ground. Phosphorus is ultimately released into the ground. So weather or weathering, it causes the phosphorus to be released from the rock. So you see here, it rains. When it starts to rain, these rock which is containing phosphorus, it releases the phosphorus from the rocks. Small bits of phosphorus are released into the ecosystem due to the weather. Okay. So what happens here, as you can see, raining, now we will stop the rain. So when the rain stops, when the sun shines, this phosphorus, it is already released from the rocks and from the land as well as on the water, there is some amount of phosphorus released. So it comes in the soil. On the soil, there are living organisms, plants as well as uh, organisms which are decomposers. So there are decomposers, there are consumers, there are producers. Now as phosphorus has entered into the soil, the land organisms, that is the plants, the primary producers, they can absorb it through their roots if it is in the soluble form. Now here I would like to tell you one more thing that this solubilization is also carried out by microorganisms. These phosphorus which was now did, uh, solu made, converted into soluble form by rains and lightnings, that is one major aspect of the natural biogeochemical cycle. In another aspect which will be the part of my second lecture is this phosphate is added into the soil by phosphate solubilizing microorganisms also. So that is one reaction which is significant and it is continuously going out in soil. So you will see that in our next lecture but right now here just see we are trying to focus on the movement of the phosphorus through the nature or the ecosystem. So phosphorus has been released, there are two modes of releasing, one is uh, rain and lightning, other is phosphate solubilizing microorganisms which is not shown in this uh, slide but remember phosphate is solubilized by bacteria also. So this phosphate it arrives in the soil and now roots, see here these plants which are there, these plants simply absorb the phosphorus through the roots. Now see I will click on the roots and you can see what happens with the phosphorus. Phosphorus is being absorbed by the roots. Absorption takes place, plants they can use this phosphorus and these plants rich in phosphorus are consumed by herbivores. Now you can see these herbivores, the snail is taken as an example of the herbivore here and it is a consumer. The snail is a herbivore so it's the plant and as it eats the plant the phosphate which is there it is becoming a component of the snail. So phosphorus is there in its shell, it is there in its body. So the snail is a herbivore, it eats the plant, it's how animals get their phosphorus to make their DNA, ATP and the phospholipids which we have seen. Now it has come into the snail, snail eating plant, it is just an example, modeling of course. Now this snail will be consumed by, in this picture if you see it will be consumed by a frog. Up in the food chain this snail eats the plant, this snail is consumed by frog, the frog it eats the snail, the phosphorus is moving up the food chain, phosphorus moves the is moving it is moving from one system to the another system now if you see this frog it will be consumed by a eagle frog will be eaten by a eagle and phosphorus moves still up in the food chain so from plants to snail snail to frog frog to eagle where is microbiology here you may be wondering and as i said this is just a introduction for you to understand the global perspective of phosphorus. Phosphorus it is continuously moving. The most important thing which has to be understood is that phosphorus is not available in soil. Availability is made by rains and secondly by microorganisms. I will explain that in detail in my next lecture. But here just see how the movement of phosphorus is taking place. 
So phosphorus it moves up in the food chain. So what happens with this eagle when it dies? Okay, it all it all started with crum crumbling of the rocks where the phosphorus was released. Decomposers. Now let us con consider that eagle dies one day and it is added into the soil. So decomposers are those organisms like mushrooms, microorganisms uh, which are present in the soil. They have of course they also need ATP, they have a DNA, they have phospholipids. So they need phosphorus too. So these decomposers they will feed on the dead. Okay, they will feed on the dead. Not only they will feed on the dead plants, animals, insects, even including it may be a dead eagle which one day it will die and come into the uh, soil. So this dead snail even when it will die, it will also feed on the dead snail. So the important aspect is that what happens is when these phosphorus it is brought back into the soil then it again re-enters into it re-enters into the plant material a plant which is dead dead plant absorbing uh, releasing phosphorus giving phosphorus to some other plants which are growing in the vicinity so like any other organisms decomposers they uh, convert the decomposing matter into soil organic matter they release if you call this as waste let us say they release the waste into the ecosystem and some of this waste it contains phosphorus so phosphorus is continuously transformed from one system living system to another system and if you see here now the decomposers the decomposers which are now uh, decaying this dead material and releasing the phosphorus once this decaying starts phosphorus is again released out of this which organism or which living system will again take the phosphorus naturally the plants again it again is absorbed by the plants so now i hope you understand why it is called as a cycle it is called as a cycle because it starts by absorption by plants then it release and again absorption by plants so that is how it enters into a phenomenon where we call it as a phosphorus cycle so if you just now see take a small quiz of what we have just studied which molecule does not contain phosphorus of course carbohydrate does not contain phosphorus how does phosphorus get into the soil in the first place of course from the rocks not from the decomposers where do herbivores get the phosphorus from the herbivores which are the first uh, primary consumers they get it from producers that is the plants and where do carnivores get phosphorus from the carnivores they get phosphorus from the from the consumers the consumers which are consuming the uh, plants they are responsible for the tra this transfer and how do decomposers they get the phosphorus decomposers they get the phosphorus from any dead organism which is dead and decaying and added into the soil so this is how the phosphorus it enters into the uh, cyclic pattern and cyclic form in nature now there is sadly a human activity which disturbs the whole thing human actions they are disrupting the phosphorus cycle humans like this farmer in the picture they are routinely adding extra phosphorus to the soil because phosphorus is also used as a fertilizer now what do you think the extra phosphorus which the farmers they add in the crop they are not used to kill weeds they are not used to kill bugs they are used to stimulate growth now the phosphorus which is added extra phosphorus it is leached into the ecosystem if it is so good then why it is also bad why i am saying phosphorus if it stimulates the plant growth why it is bad of course it is bad because excess amount of phosphorus which is spread as a biofertilizer means biofertilizers which are added to the plants to the crops there is excess amount which is though it helps the crops to grow better it is washed away into rivers lakes ponds when it rains see here when there is a continuous raining now this is a 
plant which has been absorbing or taking phosphorus but here extra phosphorus which was there in the soil all this leaches out into the pond this is the basin you can say it as the river basin okay so it gets accumulated there now when the rain stops most of the phosphorus it has got washed away into the ponds or there may be artificial ponds also which are temporary and this extra phosphorus uh, which is a very good fertilizer it allows the algal blooms to grow algae it grows in large amount as the algae it eventually dies the decaying it produces it absorbs the oxygen whatever the flora and fauna in that lake or a pond is there they will die fishes will die and once the fish they die the ecosystem is disturbed now this is very imbalancing for the uh, not only what you can say the water but also for the whole ecosystem as you can see this is a eutrophicated lake now the algal blooms have made the water unsafe for any activity that is the surface scum the surface garbage which is there in the form of algae due to high nutrient load of phosphorus in the water has made most of the water unusable for any activity okay so is there any hope with this uh, uh, human activities yes there is there always is a solution for the problem you should go for organic food products okay those farmers who do not use extra chemical fertilizers they should be encouraged to use bio fertilizers it is a slow process of okay but we can help to stop this problem by encouraging organic foods where extra chemical fertilizers are not used okay so that is one of the way to encourage organic farming and uh, i hope every village it has a local market where organic food stuffs are sold organic uh, vegetables and fruits are sold those products sh should be encouraged so this is all about the uh, phosphorus cycle and i hope you have understood why we are calling it as a phosphorus cycle now the next part of the lecture will be to understand the microbiology involved in this phosphorus cycle so that will be the next part of my lecture i hope you uh, have got a very good idea of how the phosphorus it uh, cycles in the nature two important things you have to remember phosphorus is not available in gaseous form due to which fixation is very difficult second whatever the phosphorus is available on the earth it is in trapped form in locked form locked in the form of rock phosphate or it is mostly available in the soil in the insoluble form so first it has to be solubilized solubilization takes place majorly majorly by the withering that is the rains etc withering system which is there and secondly a very significant activity of microorganism also helps in phosphate solubilization so that will be the part of my next discussion about phosphate solubilizing bacteria and how phosphate plays a, a very important role uh, with the help of microorganisms in not only entering into the biological system that is the life system but also the elemental cycles of nature so till then i hope you revise and understand this lecture uh, in a nice fashion and again as i say the urge should be to understand the higher levels the molecular levels of whatever we are studying a urge to understand the higher level will only make you a master in the subject you will you will achieve excellence only with that urge to go to the next level and what is the next level sky is the limit there is no next ending level whenever you think there is a end the thing begins there that is what is the beauty of biology as compared to other sciences for example physical and mathematical sciences which are the foundations of biology try to understand and know where those subjects should be demeaned those are the basic principles on which biology is based upon with due respect to biological and physical sciences i would like to just draw parallels that in mathematics and physics you have you come to a conclusion you prove a theorem you prove something but in biological system there is no end when you think there is something 
is ending here a new window opens and you enter into a totally new domain of understanding so that is what i call it as the higher level of understanding which you should thrive for so till then for the next part of this phosphorus cycle which will be the microbiological perspective goodbye see you soon